Hi, I'm Dr. Joe DeBruin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy what you hear today, please check me out and learn more at my website, joedebruin.com. And please subscribe for further videos. Today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite topics, self-esteem. It's going to be 10 tips about self-esteem. Number one, self-esteem really is both cognitive and behavioral. In other words, it's self-talk and it's behaviors. If we want to um, uh, think about self-esteem, think about it's a concept that's uh, kind of operating inside of our head, our self-evaluations, uh, but it's also the behaviors that we undertake. If we want to understand someone's level of self-esteem, we can ask them, you know, how do you feel about yourself? And they can say, well, I feel crappy or I feel really solid or I feel really good or I'm proud of this or whatever it is. Uh, or they can, we can also sort of watch their behaviors. It shows up in how they, in their demeanor, and various things that they do and don't do in life. And that's, I, I think, a real a solid take on self-esteem. Number two, self-esteem really is a significant buffer against defensiveness. Uh, when we are defensive, uh, it just means that we really have an excessive need to protect ourselves and defend ourselves and to give an explanation versus when we feel really good about ourselves, we can have a person say something, you know, I saw this or you did this or I have this opinion about you or whatever it is. And maybe we agree with it, maybe we don't agree with it, whatever. But we're just not as defensive. We're much more open to the other person just having their opinion, frankly. So self-esteem is a great buffer, a great uh, buffer against defensiveness. Number three, self-esteem is really a, a way to honor all of the dozens of family, friends, and mentors that we've had over the course of our life. Most people, we've had a lot of people that have had inputs into our life. And when we feel good about ourselves, it's a great way to have as a passive, sort of de facto way to honor all the inputs of, of, of a lot of people over the course of our life. Number four. Self-esteem is incongruent with arrogance and lack of humility. One of the common things I, I, I get from people is, well, if I feel really good about myself, isn't that the same as me being very narcissistic and me being very arrogant? And I say, absolutely not. In fact, my opinion is that when people are very arrogant and they have just no humility, I think that's more of a sign that they don't feel good about themselves. I think that uh, people that are very, very arrogant when you strip away that outer core of arrogance, you find a shell of a person, someone who does not feel good about themselves, and they use that arrogance as a, as a mechanism to guard against uh, people seeing how they feel about themselves. Number five, self-esteem develops from doing numerous hard things and taking risks. I have, uh, when I first started my career, uh, I would of course talk to people about self-esteem all the time. And uh, probably the biggest thing that I emphasized was them telling themselves a different story about who they are. And there's still a piece of that that I think is really vital. But over the course of time in my helping people and just living my own life, I've learned that a big piece of self-esteem comes from us just doing hard things and taking risks. And then when we do those hard things, and we take those risks and we make some steps forward. We realize that hard things didn't kill us. They can strengthen us. And when we take some risks, we're more willing to take more risks. It's a huge piece of developing self-esteem. I strongly encourage parents to, yes, tell your kids good things about themselves, but expose them to numerous hard things and help them take risks. If your kids don't have any failures, they're probably not taking any risks and their self-esteem is going to be uh, based simply on you telling them, them how wonderful they are and that can only go so far. Number six, self-esteem leads to increased capacity for forgiveness. When we feel good about ourselves, and people hurt us or they disappoint us, we have I think more of a, a, a potential to, uh, to forgive them to not focus on the, the crime that the other person did forever because you know what? We feel good and solid about who we are. We could be that kind of person. Similarly, number seven, self-esteem leads to increased capacity for generosity. 
when we feel good about who we are, we're more willing to share the good pieces of our life, our time, our energy, our money. Uh, it's not a zero sum game kind of scenario in life. We are more willing to share the loot of the goodness of our life with other people. And we're more capable of doing that. Number eight, self-esteem is a vital component of psychological well-being and there's loads of research showing how our psychological well-being is connected to what we call morbidity and mortality. In other words, if, we can, if I can unpack this, our overall psychological status, our overall psychological well-being, a huge piece of that is our self-esteem, how we feel about ourselves, the evaluation that you or I give concerning us. And there's a lot of research that shows that our psychological well-being as a strong component in whether we get disease, in other words, certain kinds of morbidities, and also mortality. People that feel better about themselves, that have a better, stronger, more solid sense of psychological well-being, what? They tend to live longer, they tend to get less uh, illness, less disease. We might still get a particular disease, but maybe we'll get it later or maybe we'll get a, a more mild version of that. There's a ton of research over the last 30 years connecting psychological well-being to illness, and we can help us ourselves avoid a lot of illness and severe illness by just feeling better about who we are as people. Self-esteem number nine. Self-esteem requires us to not listen to the few critics at the expense of the many supporters. Uh, I've had a lot of people that tell me stories, some person, a boss, colleague, a parent, a sibling, whoever has told them a particular thing. Uh, something that, that is a definitive characteristic, you're this particular kind of person. But they never heard that from anyone else, or they've had maybe only a couple people that have said that over the course of their 40, 50 years. If it's such a big deal, uh, and it's so uh, easily detectable. I tell people, you know what? Most likely you're going to hear it from a lot of different people over the, over the course of time. And also, what about all the people that have been supporters? That have said, you're wonderful, you're creative, you're smart, you're whatever. The person that says you're stupid, they shouldn't get all the airtime. But what about all the dozens, many, many people that say, you're great, you're awesome, you're smart, you're capable. Let's not drown out their voice because uh, just a couple people are given all of the credit. So let's realize that the critics uh, need to be put in the margins. Number 10, self-esteem, it's really a journey, it's not a destination. Like for example, no one says, you know what, I went to the gym three or four uh, times a week, I did that for three years, I got myself all buff, I got a huge six pack, I'm really fit and trim, so you know what, I decided I was done, I quit the gen membership because I can check off the box, I've got physical fitness. Well, it doesn't work like that with physical fitness. It's a lifelong process. And self-esteem is the same thing. I think that a person could have great self-esteem and can get even better. Again, that doesn't mean they're becoming narcissistic and arrogant. It just means that there's deeper and deeper levels of feeling good about who you are as a person. It's a destination. It's, a, uh, it's not a destination, it's a journey. Have fun uh, in the process of growing who you are, becoming more solid as a person, and developing your sense of self-esteem.